It's been a tough year for the startup ecosystem in 2022, from a talent crunch to layoffs, followed by a funding winter in a rising rate era. Global startups have seen it all in 2022. But what's the way forward? Well, will the private market funding revive? Listen in to Sequoia Capital's MD's Big Take. Well, 2022 has been turbulent. Yeah. 2021 was exuberant. Uh, 2022, we saw lots of changes. Yeah. Look, I'm we're, we're really looking forward to 2023. We think this is going to be a very good year to build. It's so it's not going to be build. worse than this year? The, look, the funding environment, so you have to say what is worse and what is going to be better, right? Okay. Uh, the environment in which to build a company actually is going to be better on all dimensions except fundraising, okay. right? So talent will get more affordable. Uh, there's going to be a lot less noise. Uh, many of, uh, let's say, a startup's competitors, many of them may actually not be around by the end of the year if they don't have high-quality businesses, right? And if customers are willing to buy your product and pay for it, it means you built something that's a must-have product. So it's a very good time to build. Similarly, Lion 2023 is a great time to invest. Why? Because, you know, again, it's a lot less competitive. Valuations are much more reasonable. And companies that do raise are going to have very high quality businesses, right? And we can talk about what that means at different stages. So time to build, time to invest. And I would say the most important thing going into 2023, it's going to be the year of very high quality. Okay. Quality, quality, quality. That's going to be the theme for the year. So it's going to be quality investing as well? No, it's quality everything, right? So basically, at the end of the day, the focus is going to be on quality businesses. So what does that mean for a startup, right? If you're a seed stage startup, you only should have one goal which is to get to extraordinary product market fit, right? If you've raised your Series A, your goal should be one. If you don't have extraordinary product market fit, make sure you get to that because scaling without that is not a good idea. But second, you know, get to very, very sort of viable growth engines, right? Where your LTV to CAC is very, very strong. And if you're a later stage company, you've raised a Series C or D, you have to make sure that you have very strong unit economics. And if you're public, you either better be profitable or you better have a serious path to profitability very, very soon. Because one of the things we've learned with public markets, not just in India, but also in the US, is public market investors want to see companies that are going to build what we call very strong economic engines, right? This has also been the year of layoffs. It's been the year also of markdowns. Yeah, so basically, a simple way you should think about it is if you don't have a high quality, if you're building a company, if you don't have a high quality business today, okay, and high quality means different things. You're a seed Define stage company. Define high quality. Yeah, so if you're a seed stage company, do you have exemplary product market fit or not? It's very simple. There's only one question that matters if you're a seed stage company. If you don't have exemplary and not mediocre product market fit, exemplary, okay? exemplary product market fit, you should just focus only on one thing, which is get to exemplary product market fit, otherwise pivot. Because if you have mediocre product market fit, you're not going to build an enduring company. We know that. And in this market, and whether it's, whether it's end of 2022, all of 2023, I think even in 2024, 2025, you're just not going to be able to raise capital, right? Because Series A investors have no interest in funding a company that has mediocre product market fit. And boy, if you don't have product market fit, you're in big trouble. So you should continue to kind of keep your team small, keep iterating, keep trying to find it, right? What is Sequoia looking for in 2023? A year ago, a lot of it was Web3. I suppose it's not the case now. So basically, look, there are about four or five themes that are interesting, right? So India is now beyond a stage nine thorough where it's about one thing. No. Right? We're about many things, right? Many sectors, many themes, many interesting themes. I think the, the, the most dominant theme, if you will, will continue to be building software from India for the world, okay? So this is, SaaS, this, this is a broad category of companies, SaaS, developer tools, modern data stack, infra, cybersecurity, you know, and the list goes on. Vertical SaaS, now AI, right? So, so that will continue to be the dominant theme. Now, within that set of themes, as we go into 2023, we think AI, uh, so for instance, in our last search cohort, we had a company called GAN, GAN.AI. By the way, you should use GAN and create, you know, personalized videos from Nayanthar Rai for all your followers. It's pretty cool, actually. But first, try the essays, right? That's yeah. <laughs> yeah. the new big thing. Yeah, there you go, there you go. <laughs> so, so, so basically, you know, what we're seeing, actually, just within search, by the way, we have over half a dozen AI first companies now, right, which are being built from India or Southeast Asia for the world. So AI is one sub theme that we think will gain more prominence in 2023. The second one is vertical SaaS, right? Vertical SaaS is where you're building software for a specific vertical. So recently, our venture team, uh, my partner Abhishek Mohan, led an investment in a company called Prism Force. 
right? They're building software for the IT services industry for their internal use, right? For their talent management sort of needs. Another another company. So they're willing to say, outsource and they're willing to go to a startup. They also yeah, issued a story on Prism Force. Yeah, it's very interesting. It was announced uh, about about six weeks ago. I think we we announced a, a Series A investment in, uh, in in Prism Force. So that's an example. They're building software for the IT services industry. Yeah. Which is a two hundred billion. And they have industry, them right? already as clients signed up. Well, Indian you have to talk IT to the founders. You companies. should talk to the founders and get their story from them. But that's one example, right? Another example is a is a company that we in our most recent search cohort called Attentive.ai. So they build software for outdoor services firms in the U.S. Here's an amazing thing about the U.S., right? When you have a $26 trillion economy, just outdoor services in the U.S. is a $100 billion industry, right? It's got thousands of firms that do everything from lawn mowing to, you know, mm. so on and so forth, right? None of those businesses use software. So they're, they've actually built a vertical set of software, that's AI first, actually, that helps those companies, those small and mid and, mid and large enterprises in outdoor services in the U.S., digitize their businesses, right? So, so vertical software, we think, actually, if you look at in the last four or five months, more than 30% of the investments that we've made as Sequoia at seed stage and at venture stage, surge and venture, yeah. is actually these vertical software companies, right? So that's, and developer tools is the third area, right? There are 30 million yeah. developers. Can, you know, how do we make these developers more productive? I think that's going to be a perennial theme. So I'd say that's the first big theme, building software from India for the world. These are three sub-themes that are interesting. The second mega theme is, the India consumption story, hmm. right? India obviously seems to be bucking the trend. We'll have to see, you know, how, how 2023 works out. But the reality is Indian consumers continue to be very vibrant. Indian businesses continue to spend. And within the Indian consumption story, Nayanthara, we have a bunch of different things going on, right? New consumer product brands in beauty, in food, in toys, companies like Skillmatic, in water purification, company like Drink Prime in Bangalore, right? Across the board. Right? So you've seen companies like Mama Earth and many others in the beauty space. You're seeing lots of new innovation in food. So that's big. We think that will continue because as India goes from 3.5 trillion to 7 trillion of GDP. And the third largest economy. No, no, not only that. Indian consumption today, con Indian consumers spend $2 trillion. Okay. Yeah. Over the next, by the end of the decade, that number is going to, we are going to add another $3 trillion of consumption per year. In India, right? So you can imagine how many new companies could get. So new brands. The second big theme in consumer is vertical commerce, right? Today, over 150 million Indians buy products online. I'm not talking about digital payments. Buy products on platforms like Amazon and, and Flipkart and Nika and so on, right? So Nika was a beauty vertical commerce mm. play. You have Lenskart in, you know, eyewear. eyewear. You have First Cry, you know, in baby and moms, right? What we are now seeing is many, many different verticals emerge, Nayanthara. Right? In fact, in our next search cohort, you'll see a couple of those companies that are very interesting. New verticals, new things. So that's second. like what kind of vertical? So I can't tell you, but you know. Don't tell me the names, but I mean like the no, kind. But you can tell, like home furnishings. You know, it's huge, huge. But that's space. already happening. No, no, but we'll look there's at much drive, more. But there's much more. It's still very early days. All those companies, you know, this home furnishings is a huge space, right? It's largely unbranded, and you'll see a few other spaces when you see our next. Now I can't tell you any more because then you'll know which companies I'm talking about. Um, so that's second, and third would be on consumer is gaming. Right? So gaming, we think, can be a very, very large market. Of course, there's some regulatory discussion going on now. We need to make sure that... About you know, the GST and things yeah, like Yeah, because that. if you apply the GST on the entire consumer value, right, then... And if Which is the pot and the subscription if you, fee. If you yeah. apply 18% on the pot, you, will, you know, India will actually destroy a multi-billion dollar gaming industry. That's not a good thing, right? But the reality is, look, we have an opportunity to build a gigantic gaming industry. Very, very large gaming industry, right? Global spends on gaming is, you know, several hundred billion dollars, right? And India now has 300 million gamers. So consumer is a second big space. It's these sub-segments of each. Third would be climate tech. We're seeing a lot of very, very interesting companies in climate tech, whether it's EV, whether it's food, whether it's carbon markets, you know, that's sort of the third. And the fourth area, which I'm very excited about, Nayantara, is new IP-based innovations, right? Intellectual property-based mm. innovations. So if you look at India's innovation ecosystem so far, we haven't had you know, fundamental IP, right? Patents based, you know, kind of innovations that are coming out. We are beginning to see that, right? So as you know, India has a huge focus on semiconductors. We are Correct. beginning to see very, very interesting semiconductor startups coming up. You've seen it in space. Uh, actually, you know, you should, if you haven't yet, you should go and visit the Absolute office in Gurgaon. Yeah. They've got over a hundred scientists working on biosciences, right? So essentially, here's an interesting stat for you. India has over two lakh crores of subsidies for fertilizers in India, yeah. right? Absolute over the next couple of months, over the next month or two, will launch a set of new biopesticides and biofertilizers that could help reduce by 50% the 
the subsidies that we give for fertilizers because these these uh, these new products that they're launching don't need to be subsidized and they're actually good for the environment right so so i think climate tech has a lot of innovation from ev batteries to ev oeas yeah, yeah, yeah. to ev financing and so on and so forth uh, and then finally it's this it's this space of ip based innovation and what we're seeing now is especially iit chennai if you haven't made a road trip to iit chennai you really should go and understand nayantara the amazing innovation that is coming out of iit chennai because this is all ip based innovation right it's not about and by the way these are more complex businesses they're hardware they're software they take a lot more time to develop there's technology risk there's execution risk they actually many of them will require a lot more capital than than traditional internet yeah. businesses or traditional saas businesses so those are the four or five things